Every development team sets out to make the best video game possible. Despite working with the limitations of time, money, and technology, each programmer works round the clock to ensure their latest project is of the highest quality possible. But then came the eighth generation of gaming, which seems to be pumping out a staggering amount of games that feel so incomplete they need 10 patches before they stop feeling like a rough demo. They're so blatantly bad, the creators must have known the games were gonna be crucified on day one, and yet they were were released anyway. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 recent video games sent out to die. Number 10, Taxi Chaos. In Taxi Chaos, you play as a cab driver who must pick up customers, then deliver them to their destinations within a time limit. Because the game has the same premise and cartoony aesthetic of Crazy Taxi, one could mistake it as a spiritual successor of Sega's iconic racer. But do not be deceived. Taxi Chaos was developed, and I use that word loosely, by Team 6, who are infamous for creating some of the worst racing games ever, including Flat Out 3 and Road Rage. Sadly, Taxi Chaos isn't much better. The repetitive dialogue is grating, the frame rate is inconsistent, the graphics are appalling, and the music is bland. The city you inhabit is so empty and soulless, you'll feel like you're playing the prototype. Because of the lack of variety in the gameplay, you will experience everything there is to offer after five minutes. Despite the fact Taxi Chaos is riddled with bugs, you don't mind too much when your vehicle clips through a building or hovers in the air, since it's the only thing that makes the gameplay fleetingly entertaining. If you are waiting for a true spiritual success at a crazy taxi, keep waiting, because this isn't it. Number 9. Kingdom Hearts Integrum Even though the Kingdom Hearts series has been entertaining gamers for decades, the series was never playable on Nintendo home consoles. But this February, the adored trilogy Kingdom Hearts Integrum was finally available on the Switch, but not physically. Instead, Nintendo users can only play them on the cloud. Because these beloved RPGs need constant internet access to function, this robs the player of the chance to play the games on the go, which is the whole point of the freaking Switch. But if you got perfect internet connection, the trio of games are a blast, right? No, not only is the frame rate atrocious, you can't see what's happening most of the time since half the screen is filled with the message, your network conditions are not good enough to play the game smoothly. This lag makes many sections, including boss fights, impossible, since these encounters require an absurd level of precision. What's worse is there's no justified reason why this Kingdom Heart port should have these problems in the first place. The first two entries came out on the PS2. If the Switch can run Doom Eternal and The Witcher 3, why can't Nintendo's most powerful system handle 20-year-old games? Number 8. Werewolf the Apocalypse – Earthblood Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood follows a lycanthrope called Kahal who must stop a corrupt corporation from destroying the world. Not only can you fight and perform tasks in your human form, you can shapeshift into a wolf to track targets, infiltrate inaccessible areas, and most importantly, rip enemies apart with your fangs and claws until they're nothing more than a stain on the wall. But somehow the developers achieved the impossible and made a werewolf game boring. Every aspect of Earthblood feels underwhelming, whether it's the rudimentary skill tree, the looping melodies, the button bashing fighting, or the first draft storyline. The one element that receives the most animosity is the janky animations, which look like they were ripped right out of 2004. The stealth sequences are fun at first, but there's nothing here that hasn't been done far better in Metal Gear Solid or Assassin's Creed. These sections also become dull quickly, encouraging the player to stop being sneaky and instead just hack and slash everybody you see the instant you enter a room. Sadly, this method also wears thin. Shredding goons to pieces sounds cool, but you'll be bored to tears after you've done it for the thousandth time. Number 7. Pray for the Gods it's impossible to talk about Prey for the Gods without discussing Shadow of the Colossus. This 2005 action adventure revolves around a hero who travels across the world to slay giant monsters, usually by scaling their bodies. Shadow of the Colossus was considered arguably the best game on the PS2 and among the best video games ever. Now imagine how this masterpiece would have turned out if the developers didn't perfect the climbing mechanics. Because the entire game revolves around clambering up skyscraper-sized behemoths, Shadow of the Colossus would have failed if the creators didn't fine-tune the controls to perfection. And that's exactly what went wrong with Prey for the Gods. Although the player is supposed to scale monsters just like in Colossus, the climbing mechanics are so shoddy you regularly fall off the creature you're ascending for seemingly no reason. 
Here's a tip for developers, if you don't know how to make a mechanic work, don't make it a pivotal part of the gameplay. The visual designs are breathtaking, but that's not enough to accommodate the lousy gameplay. Prey is so diabolical, it makes you appreciate Colossus more, since it's better in every way, despite coming out 17 years ago. Number 6. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach Considering Five Nights at Freddy's has released 16 games over 8 years, it looks like the series has no intention of slowing down. This is a shame since FNAF really should take a sabbatical, considering how badly the latest follow-up Security Breach turned out. To this game's credit, Security Breach isn't just more of the same. Unlike the other entries, this sequel focuses on free roaming gameplay, meaning you need totally new strategies to avoid ending up in the jaws of those abominable animatronics. However, mixing up the formula isn't always a blessing. Thanks to an onslaught of glitches, animatronics clip through walls, freeze up or fail to notice when you sail past them. Sometimes they get caught in an animation loop which makes them look hilarious rather than scary. Just when you thought Security Breach couldn't be more frustrating, the game disables the save system near the end, meaning you lose up to half an hour of progress every time you die. Why would the developers insert this feature except to piss you off? Even though FNAF has been criticised for rehashing the jump scare shtick, playing Security Breach for 5 minutes will make you nostalgic for the old games. Number 5. The Good Life as bizarre as The Good Life is, it starts out innocent enough. In the beginning, this Nintendo Switch exclusive focuses on taking pictures, cooking recipes and crafting. Due to the cutesy aesthetic, it feels like an innocent little game, similar to The Sims, Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley. But then you suddenly discover all the inhabitants turn into cats and dogs at night. It's never explained why. Before you get a chance to process this curveball, one of the citizens is killed in a ritual murder. This inspires your character to solve the murder by investigating, talking to the citizens and peeing on clues. That's not a joke, that's a thing that happens in the game. The Good Life is so random it feels like the developers had six conflicting ideas and decided to just cram them all into the story instead of picking one. If you look at the trailer it's immediately clear the developers had no idea what they wanted the game to be. If you thought you might fancy The Good Life because it's unconventional and quirky, it's let down by derivative fighting mechanics, repetitive gameplay, text not matching the voice acting, unskippable animations and a barrage of other inconsistencies. Number 4. Balan Wonderworld Because most modern games push for realistic graphics, it was refreshing to see Balan Wonderworld embrace the colourful and exaggerated style rampant in the 1990s. Sadly, the developers put so much emphasis on the platformer's look, they neglected to make the gameplay fun. Simply put, Balan does nothing to stand out. Throughout the game, you walk around levels and collect stuff. And that's it. You could forgive the game a little if its selling point, the magically powered costumes, were innovative. Sadly, they're anything but. These garments give you very basic powers, if we can call them that, that allow you to jump higher or for a little longer than normal. If you die, you lose the costume you were wearing, meaning you have to go back and retrieve it in order to progress. Even though Balan Wonderworld received scathing reviews on all systems, the Switch's version got it worst, receiving the fourth lowest Metacritic score on the console. Number 3. Cyberpunk 2077 Owners of Cyberpunk 2077 are universally relieved to learn that a colossal patch has been released addressing a ton of issues with Seda Projekt's most infamous game, remedying the myriad of glitches it suffered since launch day. But at the same time, gamers couldn't help asking why weren't these issues resolved before it debuted back in December of 2020. Seda Projekt hyped this game beyond measure for nearly a decade and slapped Keanu Reeves' breathtaking mug on all merchandise dice, assuring us Cyberpunk would be a game changer. Instead, we were left with a dumpster fire with more bugs than Marvel's The Avengers, which is a pretty astounding achievement for all the wrong reasons. Even though none of the ports were stellar, the PS4 version was so heinous, Sony removed it from the PlayStation Store and only re-released it after installing a 50 gigabyte patch. When a patch is 10 times bigger than most modern games, you know the developers royally screwed up. Even though the developers rectified the issues revolving around, um, everything, it feels a little too little too late for some players since Cyberpunk 2077 should never have been released this unfinished in the first place. Number 2. Battlefield 2042 
Like Battlefield 2142, Battlefield 2042 has the player armed with futuristic turrets and drones. But unlike Battlefield 2142, the latest installment from DICE and EA sucks. Even though the predecessors in this franchise had basic components like voice chat, classes, and a single player mode, these are nowhere to be seen in Battlefield 2042. Such criticisms could be tolerated if the gameplay itself was awesome. And since matches can have up to 128 players, it sounds like the multiplayer should be out of this world. But due to the pitiful matchmaking, severe service issues, minimal weapons, and a lack of a freaking scoreboard, EA couldn't even get that right. Since the franchise's inception, every main title of Battlefield has received a Metacritic score of between 80 to 90%. But since Battlefield 5 averaged 70% and this entry ranked between 61 to 68%, the developers need to buckle down with the next installment, or EA could potentially lose the fanbase forever. Number 1. eFootball 2022 the year 2020 marked the first time Konami didn't release a new game in the Pro Evolution Soccer slash eFootball series in over two decades. Even though fans were disappointed, the company reassured gamers, claiming that they had a whole extra year to work on the next installment, eFootball 2022, to ensure it was ready to launch on next-gen consoles. But not only was eFootball 2022 the worst entry in the franchise by a mile, Metacritic rated it as the worst game of the year. So why is it so bad? Well, where do we start? The engine is offensively laggy, the content is non-existent, and the controls are finicky. However, all of that pales in comparison to what eFootball 2022 is infamous for. The animations. There is rarely a frame of gameplay where characters' bodies aren't contorting like they're acting out The Exorcist. When players collide, it's not uncommon for heads to fly off bodies or for bodies to mesh together. Even though the visuals look realistic from a distance, the players give off haunting Uncanny Valley vibes when viewed up close. Konami also had the goal to ask for microtransactions to play modes that weren't accessible at the time of launch. Rarely does a video game franchise destroy its reputation beyond repair due to one bad game. Sadly, it looks like eFootball has done it, since it doesn't seem feasible to recover from a stinker this bad. That's the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other suitable recent video games that you reckon were totally sent out to die. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald. But make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.